Hello, Carol. You've got a book this week by a woman I know as a poet. Yes, not she is. Also, she is not a novelist. Well, I mean, she's a novelist as well, but <laughs> right. she is primarily a poet. Well, she's yes. famous as a poet. Anne Kennedy. Yes. She's local, um, an Auckland poet. She's been living. She's married to Robert Sullivan, and they've been living in Hawaii for many years, on and off, but come back to New Zealand, and I think are now back in New Zealand. Anyway, the last days of the national costume is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a novel by a poet, and so the language is just exquisite. Mm -hmm. But she is a poet with a wonderful black comic sense of humour. Yes. It is very, very funny. The Last Days of the National Costume, extraordinary title. It is an extraordinary well, title. Well, the National Costume is actually a traditional Irish dancing costume, which is very heavy, heavy black material, sort of velvety material, that is embroidered all over in the traditional manner. Mm. And it has been damaged. And Gogo Sligo, who is the main <laughs> character, she's actually Megan Sligo, but everybody yes. calls her Gogo. Yeah. Gogo is um, an academic who's got sick of being an academic and, and is earning her living at the moment by mending clothing. And she always imagines what has caused the rip and the tear and the, and it's usually related to sex and it's usually illicit and uh, she gets great amusement out of it. So the client, as she calls this man, well it's actually a woman that brings it originally but the, the client who she, and she calls him the client all the way through, comes to back to collect the costume and she hasn't finished mending it because it's very intricate and involved and mm -hmm. she has to do invisible mending and redo some of the embroidery and so on. The costume almost becomes like a character in the novel. Yes. It is so significant and this guy keeps coming back and keeps yeah. coming back. Now, um, Gogo is actually happily married and, and there's a lot about that marriage and that relationship in there but she is constantly repairing this gorgeous elaborate costume all the way through the novel okay. and the client keeps coming back and keeps coming back and things get more and more involved and mm. complicated and it is hilariously funny. What's the setting for the book? Where is it? Uh, it's set here in Auckland right. and it's mm. set, now the crucial thing about the setting is that it's set in 1998 at the time of the blackout when all the power went out in yes. central Auckland mm. And um, Gogo and her husband are living in a house um, just uh, sort of in Newton Gully, just on the edge of the blackout. And so their house, they're in an old villa, their, their side of the street is blacked out, the other side of the street's not. Yes. And so she spends the whole time trying to repair in this poor light. She can sit in the window and do it in the daylight, but um, it's, it's a strain at night. So, and and the, the power being out is really significant yeah. in the novel. It, it is very, very funny, very clever. One of the most brilliant New Zealand novels I have read for a very long time. I predict an award winner in the awards next year. Wow, it sounds wonderful. And it sounds local, which is rare. Very and local. And it sounds passionate, which is fabulous. And we know and all the streets. Yeah. It's totally familiar. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the so Grafton, unusual, isn't it? Grafton so Cemetery, unusual. all yeah, everything's really, really fabulous. familiar. Sounds yeah. like a great recommendation. It Thank is. you, Carol. <laughs>